Carl here from Nettlewani, and this afternoon I have the pleasure and privilege of once again being joined by a wonderful composer, a gentleman who has continued to push the envelope on keyboard playing for decades, and who is also genuinely one of my favorite personalities to sit down and talk music with. It is, of course, none other than Jordan Rudas himself, and Jordan, once again, happy St. Patrick's Day to you, and thank you so much to, uh, for taking the time to, to hang out with me again today. I appreciate it, man. Awesome. Nice to be here with you. All right. Awesome, man. So, first of all, the new uh, Liquid Tension Experiment album is just over the horizon, and it is an incredible body of work uh, from you and the guys, Jordan. So, congratulations, uh, first off. I just want to make sure I get to say that to you. Uh, Thank you. And so, you, John, Mike, and Tony reunited to create this, uh, the first LT record in 22 years, but is it strange for you to be releasing a record, especially one with so much hype around it, not knowing when you can go out on the road and, and tour it? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, there was just so much excitement, as you say, hype uh, around the album. And that and making this album alone was just a joyous, positive experience that was that really needed to happen, you know, mm -hmm. and went into it just feeling so good about the fact that we were going to have the time you know the uh, life was just going to open up to allow us to do this amazing project and it was just such a pleasure that you know yes it would be amazing to tour you know do something with this album but it wasn't really our big concern we wanted to make an album mm -hmm. you know if we if we do get to go on the road with it and maybe do a small tour we, i mean liquid tension has never done a lot of shows mm -hmm. we've done some but uh, if we do get to do that one day, that'd be great. But if not, that's okay. You know, <laughs> it's not like I'd be like, oh my God, now we made this album. It sucks that we're not going to be able to tour it. Or... <laughs> doesn't matter to me cool man yeah. i love that thank you and like as you said there you, you've finally been allowed the time and the space to create this because for years you and the guys have been asked and hounded daily about the potential reformation of lte by myself yeah. included you know i'll hold my hands up i apologize um okay. and i know from speaking uh specifically with you mike and john in the past you had discussed doing this before but it wasn't until you know you were forced off the road due to COVID that you had the window of opportunity to make it happen and i wonder do you think this record would have still been made uh if if the pandemic hadn't taken you all away from touring or not so much um you know this was something that was talked about so much not only by like fans uh making this request um but also just like you know it's something that i've wanted to do it's something that I think we all wanted to do. Mm -hmm. It was definitely on our list, not that far down on the list of all the things that each of us wants to do again. But there was a lot of, you know, there were a lot of things that were kind of in the way of it. You know, like uh, when Mike left Dream Theater, that definitely got in the way of, you know, the possibility of doing LTE because there was, you know, understandably a, a lot of, you know, tension around that whole thing and wasn't, a, you know, for many years, it wasn't the time to do anything like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, due to a lot of factors, you know, we were able to do it. And yes, of course, you know, we're all sitting at home. You know, we don't have touring as an excuse anymore. It's kind of like, okay, guys, what about now? And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> cool, let's do it. And so even though it wasn't the easiest thing in the world now either, because, you know, you have to go with the guy who is the most kind of like, you know, uh, protective as far as the whole COVID thing goes and, you know, follow whatever rules and work it out so everybody's comfortable. So just to get to that point was, you know, there was a lot of stress involved with just arranging to get in the studio. But when we did, when we finally did, it was great, you know. But um, I think the COVID, you know, this whole lockdown and everything helped to make it happen, absolutely. That, but it was that combined with other things that, you know, kind of happened and time healing, a lot of things that were going on, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it was an easier time to for all of us to work again together as well. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Cool, man. Thank you for sharing that, Wayne, because I completely agree, because I think part of the magic around the record um, is that you can hear that it's it's a living and breathing testament to the friendship between you guys that still exists now. And when you listen to it, even after all this time, uh, there really is, there still really is a unique and magical chemistry between you guys. 
And I'm wondering, did it did it take some time uh, to reconnect in that way, or did that you know happen quite easily, naturally, quickly, whatever? Um, yeah, it, it took about five seconds, I guess, <laughs> to uh, fall into uh, to a nice groove together. So yeah, it was it was totally like the it was so fluid, you know. It, it was amazing. It was like no time at all had passed by. Cool. So literally walked into the studio, walked over to the instruments and started to play. I mean, lucky enough where our techs, you know, like basically set us up. So we walk in the room and things are ready to go. We started jamming like in no time. We were like, just got into like a half an hour jam. This is, we said, hi. And then we just like started playing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the sessions went. I mean, it was like no time at all went by. I hadn't worked with, you know, Mike in the studio for 11 years. I hadn't worked with Tony for over 20 years, except we did some stuff remotely, of mm-hmm. course, with 11 Miniman Rudis stuff, mm-hmm. two albums. But um, it was, it just gave us a whole new perspective of time because it re- literally was like no time had, gone by so uh and hence we have you know our our song of passage of time Mm -hmm. so um yeah incredible i mean and 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 the and the that chemistry that we talk of we just fell right into that again i mean i was talking to mike about it on my patreon the other day we were having a nice chat and talking about the i brought up the the um idea that in a group like with liquid tension it's, it's this, and it happens in you know all successful you know bands where you have a chemistry where like one guy can specializes specialize in one thing, another guy kind of does another thing, and everybody kind of comes into it with a very strong but very particular ability. Mm-hmm. So I really think that's what kind of liquid tension is about because it be it goes beyond musical too because mm-hmm. the musical part is extremely important. You got to make the music. But you also have to be able to produce and you have to be able to put out an album. You have to make it happen, mm-hmm. right? And to make it happen, there's a lot of factors, you know. So, and I feel like, you know, in dream theater, but we're talking about liquid tension. So in liquid tension, there's all these abilities that just come together. Like, you know, you can say, okay, you know, I'll bring in like the, you know, whatever, the melodic, harmonic kind of side. And, you know, you could you could point to everybody and kind of say, well, this is what, you know, this is the cool thing that they do, you know. And it's amazing to look at that because that's, you know, that's still, all those elements are still there. And it's a really interesting mix of personalities and, and musicianship that falls in with Liquid 10. And I, and I realized it again when we got in the room, we started to create, I was like, okay, I understand that this is, this is what it is. Like Tony brings in this like crimson S riff and I'm bringing these chords and John is playing this soaring melody and Mike is doing his amazing fills. And, you know, it's just like, wow, this really works. You know, this is cool. <laughs> I so, and I, and I, I got to see, cause you know, it's a little hard from, from my perspective as somebody in it to understand like, what's all the fuss about? Like there's so many groups, there's so many musicians, go listen to something else. But meanwhile, liquid tension, liquid tension, liquid tension. And then finally, after doing this album, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I see it. I get it. Okay. I got, a bit, I got a hit. I got to respect it. A little bit of an outside perspective, if you will, of what it is about that combination and that music that, that seems to be so resonant with a lot of people. I, I absolutely adore that answer. I, I got lost in that. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with me, Jordan. No problem. Uh, yeah, and you were talking there as well, uh, you know, when you guys when you guys first walked into the studio, you picked up your instruments and you ended up just in this kind of half hour jam. And when I listened to the record, I, I couldn't even hazard a guess of what material was maybe written prior and brought into the studio versus what material may have been improvised and kept uh, for the finished result. You know, when you're making an LTD record, what is the ratio of material that was written versus what's improvised and kept and put on the, the, the final product? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a lot of, um, there is a, you know, a big improvisational element to Liquid Tension Experiment. Mm-hmm. And the way that we did this one is, yeah, there was a ton of improvisation, but mostly we kept our our actual improvs uh, to our bonus disc, which I don't know if you heard. Not yet, right? no. But 
But that's not to say there's not there's not a bunch of improvisation on this one, like you know Chris and Kevin's amazing Odyssey. <laughs> uh, I think it was all basically an improvisation between Mike and Tony. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. And yeah, an actual liquid liquid evolution was very much improvised uh, as well. Um, but the other songs are more, you know, the other songs that are on the actual disc are more kind of composed. But as I said, there's a, uh, you know, there's a bonus disc of all of select parts of our improvisation. And we, you know, we probably have hours of like improvised material, but we have to go in and like pick things mm-hmm. on this bonus disc. So, um, Another thing I was talking to Mike about, you know, on the on the Patreon chat, I was saying that part of me feels like I could be like in one of those jam bands because I'm just like really into improv improvising, you know. And, and Mike was like, "You are in a, in a jam band, he's <laughs> wealthy mini," and he was right because we do a whole lot of impro- improvising. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> okay, right. You are. <laughs> I went. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Oh, I love that. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong. Uh, you spoke there about uh, uh, Chris and Kevin's amazing Odyssey, and there are two. Uh, that that's one of the the two duets, um, I suppose, on, on the record, and that there is between uh, Tony and Mike, and then you have uh, Shades of Hope b- between yourself and John, right? Um, yeah, that's true. And I was wondering. I, I'm curious how it came to be that you know that there are two duets on the album and how do you guys decide who would be paired with whom and or was that just kind of a again a lot of this seems to have happened quite organically as opposed to being premeditated yeah well okay so one thing i always uh like to point out because i just find it very uh interesting or even important to this kind of project is that as i said as we said you know there's a lot that goes into making an album Mm -hmm. it's not only you're going in and making the music and just laying it down or whatever there's a lot of there's a lot of elements you know it has to be produced it has to be prepared somebody's got to coordinate all the elements somebody's got to come up with song titles especially for instrumental stuff uh somebody's got to work on getting the artwork i mean you know, we all know a lot of talented musicians and you meet them year by year and they're like, you know, they, they seem like they're working on the same album for, you know, like 30 years. I know people, you know, like that. I know a lot of people like that. <laughs> Ever since I got into Dream Theater and started to work with the guys, with, with John and Mike, I realized that they have a very unique ability, which is to conceptualize uh, an album project before it even happens. Like, what is this album going to be? What do we want to release? What's the style? What are we trying to do? So there's that part of it. And I found that they were, I always, it took me a couple of albums before I realized like, wow, we don't go into anything with that. We're just not like going to the studio and start to hash around. Mm-hmm. We're going in with, there with, a, you know, even if it's a looser plan, it's still like a plan. It's like everybody kind of has a headspace we're going for. And I just think that that was cool. And, and I think that one of the, I think that one of the big talents, and we're talking about the different talents of different guys, is that, you know, Mike and, Mike and John both have a very strong head for a kind of like architecture. Like John is, a, you know, like specializes in writing lyrics and stuff. Not that LTE has lyrics, but, you know, you look at like the dream theater stuff and just his, the way his brain thinks. Um, so, but a lot of these things, like one of the things that Mike did was like, okay, you know, on this album, we should do like, you know, uh, another duet between me and Tony, that would be cool to kind of follow it through, to bring it together like a concept. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, it was like, wow, well, you know, it would be awesome to have, like, we've done these duets, mm-hmm. you know, on the first two. Let's do another one with, you know, John and I. So that kind of thinking, all those kind of things to bring it together is very meaningful to, to a, you know, a, a project, whether it's 22 years apart or not, mm-hmm. it kind of allows the, who's calling me? Let's not get that right now. It allows the, um, the listener to fall into this larger experience. Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost like, you know, when, when a group like Dream Theater has done that, when, you know, we'll end an album with, with a particular kind of chord. Mm-hmm. And two years later, we start the album with like the same chord, and people go, "Oh my God, that was a connection!" You know, there's all that kind of stuff that goes on. You know, that that uh, is important. You know, and then being able to make it happen, to be able to, you know, be able to say, "Okay, like this piece is done. We're moving on. We're doing this," and you know, to be able to produce 
to get something done, to be comfortable with it, to say, okay, I did that. Now I can let that out and I can move on. It's a lot of, a lot of skills that go into uh, getting music out there. And that is part of the skills that like this combination, mm-hmm. you know, has. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, I love that. Um, I, every time you answer a question, I could ask you another three questions based on your answer, but I know that, that we don't have that luxury. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I think you, you use words there like, you know, uh, you know, uh, ability and talent and skill. And, you know, you reference specifically um, how John's head works sometimes. <clears throat> and I think I think fans sometimes have a hard time imagining, at least the ones I've met, you guys ever struggling to play a piece of music. But on this record, there is an arrangement called Beating the Odds. Uh, and I watched you guys yeah. talk about it. Uh, and you had a pretty hilarious discussion around trying to to lock in on on this riff that John brought in. Um, yeah, yeah, right. And I was wondering how often do you guys come across songs like "Beating the Odds," where you have the whole band scratching your heads trying to to lock in on on something. I mean, that's funny because it's definitely even though you know well, we're the progressive musicians, right. you know. <laughs> <people are>. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely times like there'll, there'll be things that like. Um, you know, John will play like the beating the odds thing. I was like, it's a simple riff. Da, 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 da. Like, okay, but where's the beat? Like, <laughs> you know, we were all like, what, what the hell is that? Like, you know, because without the drums, it was not obvious. <laughs> um, so there's times like that because what happens a lot, especially with things that are odd meter, is that one person can conceive of it one way and another person can conceive of it another way. Mm -hmm. You don't, you can watch like a progressive band, like, you know, and you look look at each player and sometimes one is tapping their foot to one thing while the other guy is tapping their foot to something else. And you're going, what? (laughs) And very often, you know, whether it be Dream Theater or LTE or something else, I'll say to like John, I'll say, you know what? I'm feeling this in like a five thing. Like back it, back it, back it, back it, back it, and he's like, "What?" He says, "Don't even tell me that." So I don't, I don't. That's no, that's not the way I perceive it. And if I were to try to get him or somebody else to think about it my way, it would totally fuck him up. It'd be like, I don't know, like you know, you have to the way your your brain kind of gets a hit of something one way, you know, and then you kind of get locked into a groove, even though a groove, you know. 23 eight time or whatever but um <laughs> you do feel it as a particular groove and then it's hard to make that change so you, that kind of stuff does happen you know and i remember you know over the years like working with mike and you know uh it was like progressive like moments and doing some really wacky stuff it's just maybe the hard or confusing whatever and he's like this is like an Advil moment. This is great. Like, you know, if, it, if it's so if it's so ridiculously confusing that he needs to like take a couple of Advil because it's giving him a headache, we know it's it's really prog. You know? <laughs> so, oh, that's how yeah. you know. That's how you know. That's brilliant, John. That's how you know, right? An Advil moment. The yeah. Advil moment. I love that. That may be the headline of this interview. We'll see how the boss feels. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I love talking to you about LTE, but I also, one of the things I've enjoyed listening to most this year uh, came out quite recently and seemed to almost spontaneously emerge from the woodwork. And this is your uh, new solo album, A Chapter in Time. Um, that, yeah. that, I, I, that, that's, that was released last Friday, I believe, on, on Bandcamp. And the right. moment I heard Weightless, I fell in love with the piece, Jordan, and I quickly uh-huh. fell in love with the, the rest of the album. And I know you said it's kind of a reflection uh, and a musical diary of, of like the last year and people being forced to stay at home. But I know so little about this record, even despite my research. And I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about where these songs were born from and what the thoughts or feelings were when you sat down at the piano to create them. Absolutely. Thanks for mentioning. Yeah. So first of all, I will say that it was a surprise release for everyone. Okay. Phew. Including, my, including myself. Okay. <laughs> the reason it was a surprise release for myself is because when I went on, I wanted to release it on Bandcamp because, you know, nowadays it's the music business is really in a, mm. in a you know, terrible spot. That's a whole nother discussion, which I don't necessarily love to talk about. But I will say that I, I just felt like, you know, how do I want to put this album out? I want to at least be able to like cover my expenses and, you know, and share it and get something in return for it. I just put it out on like Spotify or like, you know, that streaming services 
I might not even get enough money to pay the artist. You know, like that's, that sucks. You know, that's really scary yeah. stuff. What's yeah. going on today in the, in the business. So we, you know, we released that, uh, the Christmas dream theater released a Christmas song that we did on Bandcamp, And it was wonderful because we raised enough money to really help our whole crew get through the holidays and give them a little bit of, you know, extra support. I felt so good about that. And I was really impressed with the band camp format. I like it. I think it's great. It gives people the opportunity to give something back. If they want to give a little bit more than your asking price, they can do that, which is nice. And I see it as one of the only ways you can actually make any money right now. Like if you do uh, do a release. And I decided I, I didn't really want to do a physical release either because I'm just releasing it myself. And this was, a, okay, so this was a very, oh, so I went to Bandcamp and I'm typing in all the information, typing it in, putting it in, putting in the songs. And all of a sudden I realized, holy shit, I just released it. <laughs> you know, like no. I'm, I was confused by the interface because I'm, I'm a musician. I'm not like a programmer and I'm trying to put in all this stuff. I feel bad for anybody who's like trying to navigate this stuff. And I was on the phone with my managers. Like, How do I make one song streamable? And this one, you know, hey, da, da, da. we're trying to figure it out. Meanwhile, in, in the middle of that, I released it. And then I thought, <laughs> OK, what the hell? I released it. It's, it's been waiting to come out anyway, you know. And I told and the people I've spoken to on some interviews, you know, in the past month or whatever i've mentioned this just like it's coming it's coming um i didn't know it was coming out that particular day until we all found out <laughs> that it was out so and but then i was as happy to let it go so um yeah so this album was this is probably my most personal album to date i mean i've done a lot of piano albums uh something like all that is now is one of my albums it's very like you know it's me kind of like you really get an inside look at my musicality just improvising it's very nice but this one was this new album i think is unique because it really is kind of a musical diary when the whole lockdown happened we all got hit by the intensity of being you gotta stay in your house you know like and we were all everybody even though covid is it's still very serious. We've all maybe gotten used to it, and maybe with vaccines, we've lightened up. So the, the vibe is a little, is not quite as like frightening, scary. So, but I needed a way to express myself. And, and the best way, as I've mentioned, is, you know, going and making music. Like I, I just, you know, when I, when I feel something deeply, I'll walk over to my piano and I'll just start to play, you know, and I'll, that's, that's my, my way of letting out my feelings and my thoughts and my emotions. So I would do that. Like I would go to my studio and the whole, and a chapter in time is very much, it was done with virtual instruments, but it was done around kind of a piano theme. I'd use these yeah. really unique uh, uh, software instruments that are piano sounds, but they have these elements. You can almost hear like the inside of the piano, like you hear the felt, you hear the workings of it. And then I would add like elements of like organic kind of ambience to it. Like things when you kind of go, what am I listening to? Like, what is that? Whether it's like a spacey background or, so it's all kind of like trippy in that way, uh -huh. but it's all, but not so trippy that it takes you away from the, the melodic kind of gentle side. So it's mm -hmm. very gentle. I think it's very thoughtful. Maybe at times it's a little like sad or, Absolutely. Um, yeah. you know, so, but that's the headspace I was in. I think it's, and I, and it was funny because I, I was, you know, it's hard to name albums nowadays in 2021. It's like, every name is taken, you know, so what do you, <laughs> and I wanted to find something that, that, you know, told, kind of, you know, told people what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, after a lot of thought, I finally came up with a chapter in time. And of course I Google searched it and I'm oh, okay. There's not a lot of things called a chapter in time. Like that's maybe a wrinkle in time, which is a, you know, something that's been used, but a chapter in time, that's kind of new. And I thought that really describes this, mm -hmm. you know, when, when years later, you know, when we look back at this, I have something that I produced, something that it was expressive in that period of time that we can all, you know, if you're, uh, you know, somebody who's into my music, they can go back to my catalog and go, wow, a chapter in time that was, you know, is what it, what it is. So, yeah, so I put it out. I'm so happy with, with the decision to put it out on Bandcamp because I find that I've been finding that a lot of people are responsive to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and checking it out, which is so great, and I'm so grateful for that, uh, given that it's not like an all-out prog rock album or something like that. And I'm just happy to share that because, uh, for me, music is like healing, you know, and, and I know I heal myself with music, and I try to find my, my own personal uh, 
comfort space, you know, play things that kind of allow me to breathe a little smoother and feel more comfortable. And if I can share that with you and I can share that with everybody, you know, that listens, wow, that's, that's like, to me, that's like the most important thing on this planet for me. Because mm-hmm. what else am I going to do, you know? <laughs> I love that, Jordan. Thank you so much for talking about uh, a chapter in time in such in such depth. And I could again keep on asking you questions about that <laughs> album alone, uh, but I know you got a busy day ahead of you, and we're coming to the end of our time. Um, so I've only got yeah, I, I've I've got one one just one question left left for you uh, because it would be you know criminal and i would i would be i would be um banished to spend time with jordan rudas and not ask you a question about dream theater right uh, so I, I i know that uh, mike has said um the, the 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 record you guys are working on has an unrelenting energy with vintage dream theater melody weaved in and i know john has said that there is indeed like an eight string guitar song <laughs> We're getting um, hints. We're getting hints about the Getting that hints, thing. exactly. Getting hints, and I haven't, I haven't gotten a hint from you yet, yeah. Jordan. And I was wondering, yeah. is After, there? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that to you. I, I did have one very small thing to add to what I was just saying, which is cool. Which is that, that you know, over over the last period of time, I started this Patreon, uh, which has been great because it's enabled me to share and keep producing music and get get you know support and return. But one of the cool things we did is for a chapter in time, my patrons helped to name the songs. No. So I would I would let them hear some not all of them, but I'd let them hear some of the songs, and then they would all feed back with their with possible names. So cool. and it was awesome. So a lot they came up with great names and it really, really helped. So uh, that. yeah, wonderful, that. a wonderful aspect of Patreon. You know, they're they kind of everybody's kind of like on the inside and they're you know, I share things that other people just don't get to, to, to hear or to know about. So they did help. So now on to Dream Theater. So Thank you for that. That was beautiful, by the way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like I said to John the other day, we were, I was in the studio. I was finishing up my keyboard track because now I basically did all my keyboard tracks. Very and cool. first of all, the, the, I'm so happy with them because I feel like, you know, I got to say, these. I laid down what I think sonically speaking at least are the best keyboard tracks of any dream theater album and i say that for i guess there's different factors that have influenced in me and that and the reason i'm expressing that one is you know we learn so much from every album that we do and we take those lessons into serious consideration and so when we go to do the next album the next album there's always something that we feel we can do better mm-hmm. and there was something about me being in the studio with jimmy t jimmy t is our mm-hmm. our recording engineer um and uh he's so he's great and he's so sensitive to sound just like i am and we got to work a lot, just the two of us in the room on recording these keyboard parts, and we were having a great time. We'd be, I'd be, we'd be playing along, we'd go, wow, that's such a big hit. First of all, we would find these sounds to make that particular hit, like really cool, whether I go into my like effects library and do something, and then maybe he'd be like, yeah, it'd be cool if it was like, like some kind of swoosh up to the sound and like, you know, and so we'd be finding all these like really cool things and taking the time because part of it is that we're in our own recording environment. We're in Dream Theater headquarters. We have a nice space where we can work, take some of the pressure off from the time factor. So we would, and everything we went for, we took the time to make it a little bit more special. Like instead of like finding the usual Dream Theater pad sound or whatever, I'd be like, you know what? Let's, let's find something a little bit cooler like let's get something more sonic you know and so we would take the time and go yes that's it or like you're looking for a drone like let's add some movement to the drone let's do something or like another example is like this like finding the like a lot of the parts are really orchestrated and uh i've worked with my friend uh we call him skippy he's got a company called plug-in guru and he does this thing where he prepares the virtual instruments but he's able to offer them through a program called Unify that lets you like layer all these amazing virtual instrument strings and stuff. So you play like a big chord and it's like cellos and violas and strings and they're all there. And it's like amazing. So I was able to take the time and work with some of those sounds and come up with some, you know, next level like orchestral stuff, you know, and choirs and all kinds. It was awesome. But the, so there's that part. But the other part I wanted to share was that I said to John one day after working and, and reviewing one of the tracks, I said, John, you know, we were leaving. We were walking out to the parking lot 
And uh, I was saying, you know, John, I said, it's crazy. I said, but here we are. I'm like, you know, 64 years old. You're, you know, you're, you're a little bit behind me, but we're, we're, you know, getting older. And, you know, people are at, people ask me nowadays, like, you know, do you feel yourself slowing down? You know, like what, what's going on? And I'm like, no, I don't. And like I said to John, I said, when I listen to this album, it's like we're 20 years old or something. What is happening? What kind of, what kind of vitamins are we eating? Like what's, what's <laughs> this? Like, I'm really proud of us because everybody, not one guy, like everybody across the board in this group is vital as ever. Like when you hear this album, you'll know exactly what you'll be like. Oh, yeah, oh, my God. Like, I see what he's yeah. saying. Yeah. You know, I was just listening to a tune because James is doing vocals now. And I was listening to something that he just put together and the kind of the final, like, you know, rough. It's not mixed, but it's just, you know, mm-hmm. rough mix, if you will. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> people are going to freak out I can't wait to share this album you know yeah. I can't believe we have to wait this long because I don't think it's coming out till like next October or something so mm-hmm. but you know what there's still a lot of, so people also should know yes we did get a head start on it because of you know we're all home but the other part of it is that it does take a, it takes a while to, to put out an album you got to get all the vinyl together you, gotta, you know there's a lot of elements that go into the production of it actually physically producing the album that does take time so even though we, we've got a bit of a head start it's going to take time to get it ready but I, it's going to be hard to hard for me to wait for people to hear it because I'm really I excited about it it's a great you know it's, it's, as hard as this period of time has been you know, for everybody around the world, the fact that not only in, in our case with LTE and Dream Theater, but the fact that a lot of people made a lot of good music during this period of time is going to make it, you know, it's kind of like almost, uh, you know, you can't really balance this out because this whole thing was, you know, just crazy. But it'll give us some healing on the other side and a lot of really nice things to listen to and mm-hmm. something to really look forward to. Amazing. Jordan, thank you so much for sharing that with me because you didn't have to. And I know we've come to the end of our time. So just want to say thank you once again for making the time to hang out with me. I always uh, thoroughly enjoy catching up with you and and talking tunes. And I really hope that we get to do it again soon. Uh, But if not, I wish you and the guys and yours nothing but the best for the rest of the year and beyond, my friend. Thanks so much, Carl. Pleasure to hang out with you and to see you again. And I look forward to the next time we can share. Amazing. Take it easy, brother. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you, Roy. Thanks, Roy. (laughs) Okay, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.